Alright, what's going on everyone? If you don't know me, I'm Cubix, and welcome back to a brand new video. So this is going to be more of a sit down and talk kind of video. I haven't done one of those in a while, and I thought it was a pretty good time for one. But really quick before this video starts, I just wanted to note that I am actually monetized now, so you should be seeing ads before these videos. If you are, definitely let me know down in the comments, I would really love to hear. But anyway, these are the top 5 greatest aspects of cubing, and essentially why it's great to be a cuber. So if you're new to this channel, definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button as well. Alright, so I won't hold you any longer, so without further ado, I really hope you enjoy this video, and let's just get right into it. I think the most important and fun part about cubing comes in a couple different ways. The first aspect, which I really want to dive deep into, is the social aspect of cubing, and this can come in a couple different forms. Whether it be socializing with other cubers at a competition, or just being a YouTuber, which is a cuber who makes YouTube videos and socializes with people in the comments and just through the videos that they make. And of course, it can also mean physically hanging out with those cubers, like having a cubing meetup, or even something like chatting with cubers online. And I think the social part of cubing is probably what every cuber, you know, really, really wants doesn't quite see at first that that's the most important part but I really think that it's what changes a lot of cubers and what makes a lot of cubers who they are. I just think it's so cool starting a new hobby, a new unique hobby that you feel like no one really does and it's so cool to be able to solve Rubik's Cube and then all of a sudden you're like opened up to this whole world of cubers, this whole community where everyone knows what you're talking about and no one's just completely oblivious to how to solve a cube and it's just like everyone gets along so well it's just so cool there's something so amazing about just like the first time let's say you walk into a competition and you see all these cubers all these people who do the same thing that you do who love the same things that you do and who can talk to you about the same things that you like to talk about and you know it's just really fun racing these cubers and doing challenges with them and solving with them and figuring out new cubes with them and what's so cool is that this whole community we really understand each other and we all know a lot of each other we all just click we're sort of a smaller community but it is massively growing throughout the years but we all just really know each other and we all just do what each other like and it, i think it's really really cool and yeah we all just click so well and i really really think hanging out with other cubers and going to competitions and doing all that it isn't the crazy speed and beating others and being the best it's really just about getting along and really having fun with other cubers i think that's a really really important part that a lot of people need to know I remember I went to my first competition. It was a couple hours away from where I live. I just remember being so nervous. I could hardly think. The first event that day was 4x4 and we were running late. And so I mean, it was really cold outside too. I think it was early winter, late fall. And so we showed up and we were slightly late and I had to rush inside to compete in 4x4 and I was not warmed up, I was not ready. Again, this is my very first competition. I was so nervous, I wasn't ready. And then I walked into the room and like I couldn't believe my eyes. Like. There were so many people who did the same thing that I did, who loved the same things that I loved, and it was so cool. You, you just saw cubes everywhere. That's a cuber's dream, just to see all these cubes and all these people playing with them and knowing what each other's talking about. And it was literally the coolest thing. And so I was sort of caught off guard for a second and forgot what I needed to do. I was just looking around and seeing all these famous cubers that I'd seen on YouTube throughout the years, like DG Cubes, Derpy Cuber, and a whole bunch of these cubers that I never thought I'd see in real life. And it was the coolest thing, just being able to meet them and get autographs from them and just talk to them and have fun. And it was especially cool judging them and having them judge you. It was just so amazing. But anyway, I walk in and I this just catches me off guard. I am so amazed. Like, it is one of the coolest things ever. And then I realize I have 4x4. And then all of a sudden the nerves kick in again. And so then I go up to solve 4x4 and gosh, I didn't even make cut off the first solve. And at home... I had been making cutoff every single time, just practicing, I would easily make cutoff. At comp though, nerves kicked in, it was a completely different thing. And so I didn't make cutoff first solve, but then I did second solve, so I was able to finish the average of five. It wasn't too good, it was a pretty bad average of five. I think he only made cutoff like two or three times that round. And I did get to judge Derpy and DG, and they judged me as well. And that was one of the coolest things ever. But after I solved that, I was kind of down, like I felt like I didn't really do too well. I just wasn't feeling the best. And then I sat down at my table where my friend had set up all our cubes and stuff. All those feelings just completely went away. I was hanging out with other cubers. I was doing what I really loved. And it was like the most fun thing in the world. Trading cubes and racing people, doing challenges, just watching people solve and compete. 
is one of the coolest things ever, and I definitely think every cuber, no matter what speed, should go to a competition. That's probably the most important part about cubing, and especially the social part of it. Not just competing and winning, but really just hanging out with other people who do what you do. It's really important to have fun in the hobby that you like. Again, the social aspect is just incredible. Like, it just blows my mind how crazy we all click and just know each other so well. And so that brings me to the YouTube part, which I'm pretty familiar with. I've been on YouTube about a little over one and a half years. So from the start, I was not gaining subscribers at all. I think in 11 months, I gained 50 subs. and 12 months, so just one month later, I had 100. And then it really just started moving on. The first 100 was really hard, especially as a cuber, because not many people notice your channel. But the comments that I've been getting have just been so heartwarming and amazing. Like the comments, the feedback, the likes, the views, all the people who subscribe to my channel, it's just amazing. They comment these wonderful things and it really just motivates me to keep cubing and keep making videos. I really also get to interact with other people and especially doing collabs, it's just so cool being able to talk with other cubers and just tell other cubers what it's like to do all this stuff and so then they can start doing it too. And so I really think it's a really cool part about cubing, making YouTube videos and just doing what you really like doing. Just filming yourself, getting good solves, doing unboxings and just all this stuff and especially interacting with other cubers which again connects to the social aspect of cubing. So we'll move on to the third aspect of cubing which I almost pretty sure every single cuber loves and that is getting new cubes. There's just something so cool about seeing this package on your doorstep that's let's say from the cubicle and a few days ago you ordered all these really cool cubes that you've never seen before and it's just the coolest thing seeing them come to your doorstep and unboxing them and doing first turns and even making YouTube videos about it. It's always so cool at first just getting new cubes and it's all these cubes you've never saw before or it's just the best cube on the market. I remember whenever I did my first unboxing, I ordered the cubes and it took a little less than a week for them to get there. But I remember those days, it felt like a whole year. Like it felt like forever. I was waiting, it's all I could keep my mind on. It was just so cool whenever I got the cubes, whenever I saw them on the doorstep, I freaked out, I ran to them, I told my brother and we both unboxed our cubes and it was just the coolest thing. I remember getting a floppy cube, an IV cube, and just these really cool non-WCA cubes that I've never seen before. It's just one of the coolest things about cubing. Over the years, it starts to fade a little bit because you're so used to them. And especially, people say once they've been sponsored and they get new cubes for free, that feeling sort of goes away. But it's still really cool getting cubes for free. Yeah, again, building up a cube collection by getting new cubes you've never known before that existed and just unboxing them and waiting for them to come is just one of the coolest things about cubing. The fourth part about cubing, which I think a lot of cubers love, and it's a really important, cool part about cubing, is making your own cubes. It makes cubing fun and never really get old. You can always make new cubes. For example, this is a Lego 1x1x2. It's not made the best, but just the part of making it and having fun with it and just having it in your collection is really, really cool. And something like a paper cube that took forever to make. Once you're done making it, it's just so cool to have and to show off to other people. I just think making cubes really keeps cubing fun, especially doing your own cube mods. It builds up your collection and it just really gets you thinking about different ways the cube works and what you can do with the Rubik's Cube. And so that brings us to the final topic or great aspect of cubing that I'm going to mention in this video. And that is practicing and improving. Almost every cuber wants to get better. So many cubers want to be the best at something, whether it be 3x3, whether it even be solving at all, or just like be the most subscribed cubing YouTube channel. Every cuber wants to be the best at something in cubing. And so for a lot of people, that means practicing. Some people will get it naturally, but other people really have to work hard to be the best. So practicing and improving is a great feeling in cubing. Just starting out where you're, you know, pretty slow and you don't really know much about the cube to really hammering it down and practicing and getting so good. Just seeing your times drop on that graph and using a cube timer and just seeing over from whenever you started to whenever you finished how much your times have really dropped. It just makes you think back on it and it just amazes you how much all the practice you did, how much it really meant. And, you know, from one day maybe averaging a minute on 3x3 and then practicing averaging 45 and then you get to that 20 second mark it takes forever to beat I know it's happened to me and then all of a sudden one day you get around it and you just feel so accomplished it's just the one of the best feelings just getting so much better and improving over the hard work that you put into it 
And so I really, really think that's one of the coolest things about cubing, just improving and getting better cubes and getting faster. But yeah, just getting faster and improving at cubing is what a lot of cubers really love. Sorry if that was kind of long. I just really had a lot to say, and I think it's a really, really important and awesome topic. And I hope everyone has a great day. Bye. <laughs>